Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so um, mathematical analysis is um, a course that you take right after you finish Calculus 3. Um, and yes, you can take differential equations and uh, linear algebra before you take mathematical analysis. Um, but yeah, math analysis is, as an English major friend of mine said back in the days, uh, numberless math. So it's the first time that you get away from the monotony of computational math and start doing some fun, good mathematical thinking. And so yeah, uh, in that course, mathematical analysis, or simply called analysis, one of the first things that you should learn uh, should be the triangle inequality theorem, a very useful theorem that we're going to state and prove in this video. Okay, so the theorem says this, which is that uh, the absolute value of a plus B has to be less or equal to uh, the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B for uh, two real numbers A and B, yeah? Okay, so how do we prove that this is true? Well, so um, this proof is a demonstration of how sometimes it's very useful to think in cases. So let's consider four cases. Uh, the first case is that A and B are both uh, greater or equal to zero. So A is greater or equal to zero, and then B is greater or equal to zero. Okay? And so then, uh, naturally, case two is A is greater or equal to zero, and uh, B is lesser or equal to zero. Um, case uh, three is A is lesser or equal to zero, and B is greater or equal to zero. And our last and final case is case four, which is that um, A is less or equal to zero, and uh, B is less or equal to zero. We've exhausted all the possibilities in these four cases, and I'm gonna tackle the first and the last case first. Yeah? Okay, now, uh, there are a couple of useful definitions of what the absolute value of a real number means. And one of those useful definitions is this, which is that we can define the absolute value of x um, as being equal to x itself if x is positive or zero. And then, of course, if x is negative, then uh, we say that the absolute value of x is the negative of x. That is, if x is less than zero. Notice that the inclusion of zero in this definition of the absolute value can happen in the top piece or in the bottom piece. In other words, instead of this here, I could have this here, and it wouldn't make a difference. Yeah? Okay, it's still uh, a good definition of the absolute value. And notice that when I write x, I'm not assuming that I know if x is positive or negative. So here, x is just any generic positive or negative number or zero. And so we're saying the absolute value of x is x itself uh, if x is positive or uh, 0, and the absolute value of x is a negative of x if x is negative. Yeah? Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, um, as I said, case 1. Well, and w and this absolute value definition is going to come in handy as we prove the triangle inequality theorem, which is why, you know, I stated it <laughs> and discussed it um, sufficiently. Okay, okay. So, case 1. We have A is greater or equal to 0, and B is also greater or equal to 0. Well, in that case, the absolute value of um, A plus B is going to be simply equal to A plus B. Because, well, if A is greater or equal to 0 and B is greater or equal to 0, then A plus B is going to be greater or equal to 0. And so then the absolute value of A plus B, since A plus B was greater or equal to 0, is just A plus B itself. And so this is true. But then wait, again, if uh, a is greater or equal to 0 and b is greater or equal to 0, this here, a plus b, will have to equal the absolute value of a, because the absolute value of a is simply a if a is greater or equal to 0, plus uh, the absolute value of b. So we see now that um, case 1 here uh, takes care of the equality part of the triangle inequality. So we get equality when a is greater or equal to 0 and b is greater or equal to 0. And let me not forget, though, that the statement is less or equal to right there. Yeah? OK, so we're done with case 1. And um, then let's go to case 4. Case 4 is very similarly done. This time, um, a and b are both less or equal to 0. Fine then that means that 
uh, a plus b is lesser or equal to zero. So then by this absolute value definition, the absolute value of a plus b is going to equal the negative of a plus b because a plus b is less or equal to zero. And as I said, that equal to could have been included in this bottom piece and is still a good definition of the absolute value. Okay, cool, so this is true. But then uh, if I distribute this minus sign, I'm gonna get minus a minus b. And we need to show that this here is equal to the absolute value of a. Uh, well, we need to show it's less or equal to, but it turns out that we're gonna have equal to. But yeah, we need to show that it's equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. Well, uh, since in this case, a is uh, less or equal to zero and b is less or equal to zero, the absolute value of a is going to be negative a plus the absolute value of b is going to be negative b. And so again, we have equality in case four because well, the absolute value of a plus b is going to be the negative of a plus b, which is negative a ne minus b, and that is equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b, which is negative a plus a negative b, which clearly is negative a minus b, which is what we had had here. So case one and case four take care of the equal to part of the triangle inequality. So then, let's go to the slightly more fun uh, case two next. Fine, and I might need the space, so case two. What's case two? Well, uh, case two has us consider um, A is greater or equal to zero, and uh, B is uh, less or equal to zero. Now, we know that the, uh, the triangle inequality theorem is supposed to read absolute value of A plus B is less or equal to absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. Okay, now here in the second case, it's easy to start on the right-hand side of the triangle inequality theorem. So if we go to the right-hand side, we see that what we need to show is that the absolute value of a plus b in this case is less or equal to, well, since a is greater or equal to zero, absolute value of a is simply a, and then plus, since b is less or equal to zero, the absolute value of b is negative b, and that's a plus negative b, so that's just a minus b. Right? So uh, here in case two, what we need to show is that the absolute value of a plus b is less or equal to uh, a minus b. But wait, here, uh, in, or in order for us to decide which of these two pieces applies to the absolute value of a plus b, we need to know the relative size of a and b, just as numbers without their signs. Right? Like, so if we just wrote down a and b without you know, they're minus signs, and here, like we're saying, b is the one with the minus sign, possibly. It could equal zero, but it's uh, possibly negative, so b is the one that has a minus sign in it. But yeah, here, we need to figure out which is bigger without considering the sign, a or b. So we have a subcase in case two. So these are the, su the two, Jesus Christ, can't speak. These are the two subcases. One is that um, a plus b is um, a plus b is greater or equal to zero. And then the second subcase is that um, a plus b is lesser or equal to zero, right? Because, well, say like, you know, we just require that a be greater or equal to zero and b be less or equal to zero. So if b is like, say, if b is like negative four and a is two, then a plus b is going to be negative two, so we're taking the absolute value of a negative number. So that's in this, subcase. Whereas if like b is negative 2 and a is 4, then a plus b is going to be positive. So that's uh, this here. Yeah? So okay, okay, okay. So let's do it one um, subcase at a time. Again, this is a sub second subcase. a plus b is less, less or equal to 0. So in the first subcase, a plus b is greater or equal to 0. The absolute value of a plus b by the definition is just going to be and that piece, so it's just going to be a plus b, and we need to show that that's less or equal to a minus b. Well, upon canceling a, what we're going to get is b is less or equal to negative b. Well, surely that's true, because what we said about b is that it's less or equal to zero. So then b, something less or equal to zero, is less or equal to the negative of it. Because like if b is, say, strictly less than zero, so it's neg a negative number, well, it's going to be less than the negative of a negative number, right? Okay, okay, so this naturally follows to be true, right? 
um, and the in the subcase that is the like and the subcase that a plus b is um, greater or equal to zero our conclusion is going to uh, be true if the right hand side is a minus b right this is a true conclusion okay so we only have one last thing to do which is uh, consider the subcase that a plus b is lesser or equal to zero in that case by the definition of the absolute value the absolute value of a plus b is going to be the negative of a plus b Right, so we're gonna say that that's less or equal to a minus b. Remember, this part is fixed, like based on uh, this case of a being greater or equal to zero and b less or equal to zero. This part has to look like that, so we have to keep that. Now, now, and this uh, second and final subcase of case two, uh, this is what we'd be led to write, right? Okay, but then if we distribute the minus sign, we're gonna get minus uh, a minus b is less or equal to a minus b. Now, canceling minus b from both sides, the statement reduces to the negative of a is less or equal to a. Yeah, check. That's true because what we said about a is that it's positive or zero, so the negative of it, which is going to be negative or uh, less than or equal to zero, this here, right? Since a is greater or equal to zero, negative a is going to be less or equal to zero. That's surely going to be uh, less or equal to something that's zero or positive, right? Okay, okay, cool. And yes, I said we were done because, well, uh, case two and case three are basically the same cases of A and B swap rules, right? So that's why I don't need to show case three. Uh, and showing case two, we're done, yeah? Cool, all right. I hope you enjoyed this. I already have a number of analysis videos out, but lots more to come. Keep watching. Take care.